Ever try to pull prices from Amazon or Walmart into Microsoft Access only to discover the data is there on the screen, but completely invisible to your code? Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by Access Learning Zone. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to get data from sites like Amazon, Walmart, your bank, your credit card company, basically anything you can see on the screen we can bring it into Microsoft Access. Even if you've already tried using a web API, an HTTP background request, the Edge browser control, and the data still won't show up, I'm gonna walk you through a simple, practical solution that just works. We'll talk about why those background methods fail and how to get around the problem without overcomplicating things. Today's question comes from Corinne in Tempe, Arizona, one of my Platinum members. Corinne says, how can I compare prices from Walmart and Amazon every week and save them in access when I can't get the prices to show up? I keep a small access database for my household stuff. Usually I bounce back and forth between Walmart and Amazon for things like coffee, olive oil, paper towels, and I'm tired of flipping between browser tabs and trying to remember which one was cheaper last time. I tried following one of your videos where you pull data from a website directly and I can get the product names just fine, but the prices never come through. The weird part is I can see the prices on the screen, but access acts like they don't exist. I don't need anything fancy or real time updates. I just want to grab what I'm looking at and save it so I can compare prices later without all the back and forth every week. This is a great idea, Corinne. I've been thinking about building a database like this myself because I got certain things I buy like every week, right? And I'll be honest, I do most of my shopping either through Amazon or Walmart, uh, like Whole Foods delivery or Walmart delivery. If you pay for their membership, you get free delivery. And I, I really hate going to the grocery store, so it saves me a ton of time. And you're right, it would not be that difficult to simply keep a database where you've got the product and then the price from each and then every week when it's ready you know, to go grocery shopping, just click a button and have access go get the prices from those websites and pull them in and then you can compare who's gonna be cheaper, right? Great idea. The problem is they don't want you doing that, <laughs> okay? Now for a lot of websites, you can read in data using an API, right? Application Programming Interface. Um, that's the site's official way of letting programs ask for data directly. And when it exists, that's always the best place to start. A lot of pages have APIs. I've covered some of them in the past and you just send a little request out and it gives you data back. Now, Amazon and Walmart do have APIs, but you have to be set up as a seller and you know, there's a lot of headache in getting, getting access to that. And for the average consumer who just wants to check the price of bananas and, and toilet paper, that's overkill, right? Now, if there is no API, or if it doesn't give you what you need, you can try reading the page, and you could try a background read using MSXML HTTP requests, which I've shown you before, or even using the Edge browser control, which again, I've showed you before. I'm gonna give you links to all these videos in just a minute. However, the problem is, Sites like Amazon and Walmart, they don't put the pricing directly in the page HTML anymore. They intentionally obfuscate it and inject it in later with something like JavaScript. So when you read the page behind the scenes, the prices aren't there. There's little placeholders for them. And I'm not gonna walk through this, but try it. Use the HTTP request like I've showed you before. Read in a page from Amazon. You won't find the pricing anywhere on there. You'll find little placeholders because after the page loads in your browser, a JavaScript function kicks in and then feeds the price in there. Okay, and so an access HTTP call won't get it. And for some other sites like you know banking, credit cards, that kind of stuff, medical sites, you've actually gotta be logged in before you can see anything at all which makes background methods basically useless. So when all that fails, the only reliable option left is to copy what you actually see on the screen and bring that back to access. I like to call this Rick's good enough solution. It's not perfect, it's not fancy, but it works. And sometimes that's all you need is just something that works, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. 
So what are we gonna do? Well, first we're gonna load the web page using follow hyperlink. Again, I've, I've got videos for all this stuff already. I'm gonna give you links in just a minute. That's gonna open up the page in your browser, just like you clicked on the link yourself. We're gonna give it a second to load with a little sleep command, right? Then we're gonna switch to the browser using app activate. Again, we've covered that before. We're basically tapping windows on the shoulder and say, hey, go, go look over there, right? That application that I just opened. Then we're gonna use send keys to copy the text. Same thing you do with your hands on the keyboard, right? Control A to select all the text, Control C to copy it. We're just pretending that we're, you know, a fast little robot with a keyboard. And, and yes, as I've said in my send keys video, I don't like relying on send keys, but sometimes it's good enough to get the job done. And this is one of those cases, especially when you're working with applications outside of access. All right, after that, we switch back to the database, set the focus where we want it to go, like in a text box, paste it, and that's it. No APIs, no parsing, no arguing with JavaScript. You just copy what you see and stick it into Access. Is it elegant? No. Is it reliable? Mostly. Does it get the job done? Yep, it will. And like the Terminator would say, no problemo. All right, so let's take a look at some prerequisites of what we're gonna need. Obviously, this is gonna be a developer level video, so if you've never done any VBA before, go watch this, it'll get you started. We're gonna use follow hyperlink to launch the web page. We're gonna use the sleep function because you need a little pause there, you gotta wait for the website to load and different sites might load differently. At three seconds, five seconds, it depends. So go watch this video. We'll need app activate to switch to the other window to the browser once it opens. My favorite function, send keys. It's the good enough sometimes function. Well, it's the king of the good enough sometimes functions. It works most of the time. And go watch this video. Um, this shows you how to copy to the clipboard, copy and paste. Um, we have to use send keys control C to copy in the web browser, but once we get back to access, we can use run command paste. Uh, or you can use control V, whichever you want, but uh, this shows you how to use the clipboard. And while we're just going over uh, uh, videos, uh, using a web API is something that I've covered before. This is where you can um, you know, talk to a website in the background without actually having to load the browser. This video, for example, shows you how to get the current date and time, but you could, there's lots of websites with APIs. This is the code that you need though to try to do that. But this is also the data that sites like Amazon and Walmart hide because they don't want you doing that. So if, you, if you're curious about this, go watch this video. And this video, part eight of my Edge browser control series shows you how to actually get page text. But again, it's, it's hidden if you try one of these other sites. All right, these are all free videos. They're on my website, they're on my YouTube channel. Go watch any of those that you feel you need to and then come on back. All right, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. Let's start off with a simple example. Let's just grab the stuff on the homepage of my website. All right, so we're gonna go into here, design view. And we got a nice box here. We can use status box to drop the stuff in. And we got a hello world button. We'll just, we'll just use all this stuff, right? Okay, right click, build event. Now this is gonna be more about me showing you how to put together the pieces of stuff we've learned in other videos. So if you haven't watched all those other videos, well, eh, you're not gonna know what we're doing. All right, so first thing we have to do is open up my website. So follow hyperlink, HTTPS colon slash slash 599cd.com. Why 599 CD? It's a long story. It's on my website. <laughs> I'll put a link down below if you're curious. Now, we want to give the website time to load. Okay? So you might want to just, you know, count and see how long does it take to load. Um, I like to give it a little bit longer than needed. Come back out here. Let's just open it up and click the button. And okay, it loaded, loaded pretty fast. I'm going to say let's wait a second. Oh, there's the page I just showed you here. Let me get this out. All right, so after that, we're gonna low, we're gonna sleep 1000. Remember, those are milliseconds, okay? Now, App Activate needs to know what the title of the window is. All right, so did you keep, did you catch what that was? So let's go back into here, let's load it up again. Okay, so for my website, it's Computer Learning Zone, that's important. All right, it doesn't matter what the URL is, it's, it, it wants to find the, uh, the title of the window, which is usually the browser tab. All right, so now we're gonna use app activate. All right, app activate, 
and then computer, whoops, computer learning zone. It doesn't have to be exact, but it, it has to be close enough. We're going to see a problem with this later on too. All right. Now again, give it a brief pause here. You don't have to wait as long. Maybe sleep 500, half a second should do it. If, you, if any of these steps crap out on you, give it a longer pause. Okay. So now we've app activated my website. So now the the focus should be sitting on that window. Now we're going to control A to select all the text. So send keys, control A, just like that, all right? Copy all text. Make sure you use the little caret symbol there for control. I think plus is shift and then uh, something else is alt, but uh, I covered that in the send keys. Um, make sure you use a lowercase a, otherwise it's going to send control shift A, which you don't want. Okay, give it a little pause, sleep 500. Now that you've got all the text highlighted, we can copy it. Send keys, control C. Uh, actually, that's copy text. Copy text. This is select all text. My bad, my bad. All right. Okay. Again, give it a pause. See, my fingers are just so used to typing 599 because my website's 599. <laughs> always, whenever I type five, it always goes to nine. All right. So we've copied it to the clipboard. Now we got to switch back to the database. Now the title of my database is tech help free templates. So whatever the title of your database is, now you want to use that. So app activate tech help free template. Now we should be back in access. Okay. Set focus where you want it to go. Now the, the form that you clicked on should be in the foreground. I'm going to set focus on this thing here, which is the status box. Okay. So it's going to be, um, status box dot set focus. Okay. If you think you need to give it another little pause here, do it. You, you shouldn't have to once you're back in access, but just to be safe, it can't hurt. Okay. Now you can send keys control V to paste it, or you can use do command dot run command a C C M D paste. That's a built in command that you can use inside of access. And then we're all done. We'll be, Okay. All right. Let's see if it works. Save it. Debug compile once in a while. I'm going to close this. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Click switch over, copied it, pasted it. Boom. There you go. And this is all the text on my website. It's just the text right there. Okay. Eh? Eh? And this will get around problems with Amazon. Let's try an Amazon page. And we'll do that in tomorrow's video. So tune in tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. And of course, members can watch it right now because I'm going to record it right now. And so that's one of the benefits of being a member is you can watch it right now. All right. So today you saw why getting data directly from websites doesn't always work, even when the data is clearly visible on the screen. We talked about APIs, background web requests. I can't talk today. Background web request. Try saying that 10 times fast. Background web requests <laughs> and browser-based methods. And sometimes they come up empty because those companies like playing little tricks. They don't want people doing what we're doing. We're not doing anything illegal or wrong, by the way. And, and they certainly don't want, you know, hackers doing, you know, scraping their entire site. But if you just want to use this to pull like 10, 15, 20 pages to, to see, who, you know, what what the price of your groceries are. They're not going to care about that. And if they do, then that's, that's their fault. But I, I, I will remind you, use this responsibly folks. But, uh, but today we learned a practical workaround by grabbing the data you can actually see on the screen and bringing it into access using real working data from my own website. See, I don't mind if you do a little scraping. Now, if I see someone doing hundreds of pages a minute, then yeah, I, I ban their IP address, but that's a different story. <laughs> Now, tomorrow in part two, we're going to take the same approach. We're going to try it on a real site like Amazon where things get a little more interesting. Uh, you'll see what works, what doesn't, what you have to watch out for. And uh, we'll talk about, uh, you know, more, more stuff like that. Now, if this video helped you out, post a comment down below. Let me know what you thought and how you might use this technique in your own databases. I always like reading your comments. But that's going to do it for your tech help video for today, brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all 
to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.